welcome the conference over to Mr. M. R. Jay Shankar, Chairman and Managing Director. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we hope uh, all of you and your loved ones are continuing to keep well, as can be during these uh, challenging times. On behalf of the company, Brigade, I would like to welcome you to the earnings call for the first quarter of financial year ending 20, 2021. I am uh, M.R. Jayashankar, CMD of uh, Brigade Enterprises Limited. I am joined by Executive Directors Pavitra Shankar, Nirupa Shankar, Amar Mysore, as well as our CFO, Mr. Atul Goel, our uh, uh, SBU heads, uh, Mr. Rajendra Joshi, CEO, Re Residential, Mr. Vineet Verma, CEO, uh, Hospitality, Mr. Subrato Sharma, CEO, uh, Office Leasing, our Company Secretary, uh, Om Prakash, and the team. As expected, not just for our company, but uh, most of most in our country. The first quarter has been very difficult and a sharp change from the momentum we had been experiencing over the last eight quarters. The severity of lockdown and the continuing spread of the COVID-19 virus, which I prefer to call Wuhan virus, has been deeply, has deeply impacted all our uh, lines of business, resulting in a substantial drop in revenue and profitability. However, it is very heartening to note that we reported a positive operating cash flow despite these challenges. During the course of Q1, our residential business showed good signs of recovery as pre-sales in April went from a low of 15% of last year's monthly average to a fairly decent percentage of 65% in June ending the quarter at an average of 40% of our usual performance of a million square feet plus. In other words, we have done about 0.4 million square feet in pre-sale. Sales inquiries and site visits picked up substantially in June 20, with a pickup of 155% and 137% respectively over May 20. We controlled marketing spend and were able to see high levels of conversion from those who inquired. Income uncertainty and fear of job loss have affected collections in Q1, but collections also improved substantially in June, helping us to achieve a value of a value in Q1 financial year 2021, almost equal to that of Q1 FI20. We would also like to share a few observations on uh, residential uh, uh, segment that are becoming a trend during the new financial year. This is just for information. Customers preferred completed and near completion inventory over under construction units. This has also been reflected in sales of other branded developers in Bangalore and other key markets. Contribution of overseas customers increased significantly. For Brigade, the contribution from NRA customers also more than doubled. Preference for long, larger units was also evident. Average size of the unit increased by about 15% in this quarter as compared to earlier quarters. Our previously initiated and ongoing efforts into digitizing the customer journey paid off during this quarter Q1. We enabled our sales team with virtual apartment tours, online booking process, digital payments for booking and milestone payments, and webinars for potential customers all over the country, as well as our key NRA market. This weekend, which is uh, fifth, uh, being our Independence Day weekend, 15th and 16th August, we are launching the Brigade Online Home Fest, an entirely digitally marketed and virtually hosted sales event in an expo format. This is the first of its kind in India by any real estate developer. Customers can browse through virtual stalls of our residential properties in Bangalore, Mysore, and Chennai, experience interactive walkthroughs 
attend video calls with our sales representatives and also book their dream homes online. We expect this format to find good traction going forward. For our existing customers, we have held webinars to update them on construction timelines and answer any questions on payment, handover formalities, and registrations which may have been impacted by the uncertainty of lockdown. In our office segment, the focus on Q1 was collections of lease rentals, and our team achieved a very healthy 98% overall. While tenants reviewed their rental costs, we did not, uh, luckily, we did not have to renegotiate or provide any rental waivers for all uh, the lease deeds that we have uh, with us, except in some straight cases, we had to give some additional time for them to pay, uh, pay their rentals. On the leasing front, there was very little activity and site visits during the lockdown, as well as postponement of decisions, since most occupiers were focusing on business continuity and pursuing a work from home model. We have an active leasing pipeline of uh, currently about uh, 0.6 million square feet in Bangalore and about uh, 200,000 square feet in Chennai. We see opportunities of consolidation and tenants relocation away from typically high priced uh, zones, which make us optimistic about our leasing prospects at Brigade Tech Gardens in Bangalore. In, Bangalore. in Chennai, we have good traction from our existing tenants itself. The retail business had a very tough quarter one due to the severe lockdown imposed in Bangalore where all our malls are located. The focus has been the retention and renegotiation of leases and collection of outstanding payments from our tenants. We have approached the situation fairly in a very reasonable manner and offered a 50% rental waiver during lockdown. Since reopening, malls across the city, ours included, have been grappling with low footfalls of 20 to 25 percent of the normal uh, figures, despite stringent measures taken to protect shoppers. We expect this segment will take some more time to normalize and with some long-term structural shift towards online retailing that has been accelerated by the Wuhan virus. However, we are still confident that in the long run, there will always be a requirement for well-designed retail spaces in, under, uh, in underserved locations, providing a combined experience of food, entertainment, and shopping. On the hospitality front, our hotels started feeling the impact of the virus from the beginning of March 2020 itself, with a spate of cancellations coming in. The nationwide lockdown and continuing restrictions in travel have caused havoc and occupancies, occupancies to crash to single digits. All our hotels have since reopened from June 8th of this year with business depending entirely and or mostly on hosting repatriation guests required to self-quarantine and in also some business from F&B sales. The outlook for next quarter, Q2, continues to be subdued until such time business travel restarts, opening up, and we, all, we also see large um, MICE activities uh, the, that may be allowed by the government. We continue to make diligent efforts to minimize costs, particularly on manpower and utilities, and are also going for all available opportunities to garner business. Our objective is to at least ensure GOP neutral performance in Q2 for our hotels, and we are confident of that, at least for two of our hotels in Chennai and Kochi. Uh, the, they'll be amongst the first one to reach uh, break-even and uh, in business. The lockdown also brought work on our construction sites to a halt for large part of Q1. The worker strength, which had come down to as low as 30% after lifting of the uh, lockdown, you know, May 4th lockdown, it has now gained to over 50% post-unlock 
more workers are willing to return subject to travel arrangements and we are helping them out in this regard we hope to have the required workforce by end of uh, next quarter q3 there is no shortage of construction materials uh, or disruption in the supply chain uh, thankfully in the past quarter we launched two projects 620000 square feet of residential in uh, an additional block in brigade el dorado or affordable uh, housing project near the aero, aero park uh, bangalore airport and 1.3 million square feet of commercial space called brigade twin towers the uh, on the land we acquired from sad miller uh, you know 18 months back or so both are in bangalore over the next few quarters we plan to launch another 2 million square feet of re residential in uh, hyderabad a uh, bit of bangalore and chennai and another half a million square feet of commercial space in bangalore now mr atul goel our cfo will present the financial results in detail after that we can have a q and a thank you thank you sir good afternoon everybody on behalf of the company we would like to welcome you to the earning call for q1 fi 2021 Uh, as we know that business has significantly impacted because of the covid-19 lockdown so our performance needs to be seen keeping in mind the impact total collections for the quarter across the segment was 376 crores with a positive operating cash flow of 82 crores the decrease in revenue is mainly due to impact of covid on economy lockdowns and certainty and weak consumer sentiment hospitality segment was the most impacted uh, impacted segment our efforts are on as cmd said to make it operationally break even we have undertaken various cost rationalization during the lockdown period overheads were brought down by 54% with major reduction in fixed and semi variable costs in hospitality and office maintenance and residential area and uh, residential segment we are expecting more business to pick up with the revival in economy recent steps taken by the rbi like rate cuts and allowing restructuring of loans are steps in the positive direction and should help business on the operational side we have launched two project aggregating to 2 million square feet during q1 fi 21 out of which residential is 0.6 million square feet of affordable housing segment and a commercial project of 1.3 million square feet further launches to the extent of 2.6 million of planned office residential space aggregated 2.1 million retail space totaling to 0.5 million square feet uh, coming to the sales performance of q1 fi 21 we have achieved sales of 0.4 million square feet which is 63% less than 1.1 million square feet sold during the same quarter ending last financial year the sales value of the area sold during the year stood at 250 crores a decrease of 58% compared to sales value of 593 crores for the same quarter last financial year the average price realization was 5956 per square foot for the area sold during the quarter an increase of 14% for the same quarter last financial year in com commercial segment we have realized around 9 we have started receiving leasing inquiries post lockdown which is a good sign of recovery and revival in hospitality segment average occupancy rate was 11% as all hotels except four point kochi and holiday in chennai remained shut for most of the lockdown and all hotels commenced operations on 8 june 2020 coming to consolidated financial performance q1 fi 2021 the consolidated revenue for q1 fi 21 stood at 214 crores versus 717 crores in the same quarter ending last financial year the real, the real estate segment clocked a turnover of 121 crores and a bit of 8% in q1 fi 21 however revenue recognition was lower in real estate due to lower registrations and registrar offices were closed during the lockdown the hospitality segment closed a turnover of 10 crores and an operating loss of 12 crores the leasing segment clocked a turnover of 82 crores and ebitda of 74% in q1 fi 21 the consolidated ebitda including other income for q1 fi 21 
to that 58 crores versus 191 crores in Q1 FI20. We have been maintained, we have been able to maintain our EBITDA margin at around between 20 to 27 percent. The EBITDA for Q1 was stood at 27 percent. The interest and finance charges for the Q1 FI21 stood at 89 crores. Consolidated loss for Q1 FI21 was 87 crores compared to profit of 73 crores for Q1 FI20. Coming to debt position and its breakup, 692 crores is the debt in the real estate segment, 543 crores in hospitality segment debt, in which 421 crores is GOP securitized loan, and 122 crores in CAPEX loans, and 2850 crores in the leasing segment debt, in which 1521 crores is a securitized lease rental loans, and 1338 crores in CAPEX loans. We have been telling, uh, and I will again reiterate that we have not taken moratorium in all the loans. Only moratorium mainly has been taken in hospitality as well as the retail loans which are there. The cash and cash equivalent stand at 461 crores as on June 30, 2020. The company's net debt outstanding as on June 30, 2020 was 3624 crores out of which BEL share is 2874 crores. The company's effective cost of that remains steady at 30th June at 9.56%. The same was 9.71 at the end of Q1 FI20. We have a credit rating of A with a stable outlook, which has been assigned by both Chris and Lenikra. Our net e debt equity is to debt 1.2x as on June 2020. The company, I will say, has a strong balance sheet as in a good position and has adequate liquidity to meet operation and other business commitments, including debt. I will hand over back to the moderator for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Anyone who wish to ask a question, they may please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Adidev Chattopadhyay from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Good afternoon, everyone. My all my questions will be on the rental business. So first, our rental uh, revenue has declined around 19% uh, quarter on quarter to 82 crores. We could give us a breakup on how much of that is because of waivers given on mall rental. That is one. And secondly, because of the interest uh, moratorium availed on malls and hotels, so what is the saving on interest you had for the quarter? Hello. Yeah, hello. Uh, on yeah. the reduction in rentals, it is entirely uh, due, due to the, uh, you know, waivers given by, by the malls. Uh, you know, it's uh, the, nothing connected with office space. Okay, and that is also includes the reduction in the camp, camps, right, which would have anyways fallen because the malls were shut. Oh, no, is that not correct? Reduction in the camp. Uh, not reduction in the camp. It is uh, primarily connected with the... Uh, uh, rentals and maybe you can uh, you can say a small portion of the cam is there, but it is substantially uh, reduction in rentals. Okay, so I didn't uh, get that the the number is it 98 percent you said collection in offices the rentals for the yes, quarter? Yes, correct. 98 percent. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Fine. See, see, it is like this. If you see only June th th 30th, it could be 95 percent. But when we have said 98 uh, percent, it is we have also taken the three percent of the collections which has come in july okay sure sure uh, so second on that uh, on the same part of the question what is the saving from the moderate we have taken for malls and hotels the interest cost we have saved in this quarter uh, yeah from malls it will be around 25 crores and from hotels it will be around uh, uh, 12 crores or so okay and this is accrued in PNL, but will be payable uh, by the end of March 21. Is the understanding correct? Uh, you, are, you are right. It will. It is accrued in PNL and it's been added into the loan balances in our debt uh, portfolio. 
ओके 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 सो सो यू आर सेइंग द नेट डेट टू इट रिफ्लेक्ट दैट व्हाट यू हैव स्टेटेड द डेफिनेटली इट रिफ्लेक्ट दैट वी हैव अराउंड अराउंड 34 करोड़ और सो ऑफ ऑफ इंटरेस्ट व्हिच हैव बीन एडेड दैट दैट इज 25 एंड ओके सो आवर डेट वुड बी रिलेटिवली फ्लैट हैड मींस टू दिस ओके दैट वे इट वुड हैव बीन रिलेटिवली फ्लैट एक्सेप्ट फॉर फॉर the payments which we loans which we have taken for both the gic uh, for tech garden and wtc where uh, their adequate loans are there and uh, construction is going on sure sure and just second question on the office leasing so you mentioned you have 0.6 pipeline in bangalore 0.2 million square feet in chennai so sir does that uh, exclude the hard options you mentioned in the presentation or does that include the hard options it it excludes the hard option it excludes the hard option it is a new, okay. new uh, pipeline okay so i'm just you just give us an update on both chennai and uh, tech gardens like all the new tenants so when do we see the rental start to come in and even for hard option uh, have they actually exercised the option yet or when will we get clarity on that see we expect the chennai rentals to start um, mostly from if you ask me today it is expected to start by 1st of january or middle of january or so in a, we have three major clients there which you may know amazon caterpillar and mckinsey i think it is uh, depending on date uh, it will start uh, sometime during uh, january and in uh, uh, tech gardens the new rentals commencement is uh, limited as compared to chennai that should also happen uh, maybe in q3 in q3 it should have q3 okay so just following on chennai so this includes the hard option area also the one you think from january or it is uh, no it does not is... include hard option it does not include okay. hard option okay but these would be the same tenants right who would have opted for this hard option right the big three you mentioned among them oh, they would be the no. okay uh, i said yes and no and okay so 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 clarity will come you're saying in 3 4 months on that on the hard option or it is a, it is a it is expected like that it can be 6 months i think in the current scenario it may be one has to take 6 uh, so months time and uh, we, uh, we also need to be slightly flexible uh, during this uh, period at least uh, till some normal fee returns uh, otherwise uh, you know like uh, naturally will be Uh, keen to uh, lease them as early as possible. At some stage, uh, we, if there are, if there is other serious interest, we may request the client uh, to exercise the hard options or, an, or make it a FRR. Okay. Okay. Fine, sir. That that's pretty clear. I'll come back in the queue for more questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yash Gupta from Angel Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, my first question on uh, cash flow to Atul sir. Can you give breakup of total collection of three seventy three three seventy five crores? How much rent we have received from eighty two crores, and what collection we get for point four million residential sale? Uh, so, uh, 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 from residential was around two eighty two crores, leasing was around eighty two crores, and hospitality was a twelve crores. So, this is a breakup of three seventy six crores of uh, collection, which is there. No, so uh, my question is for residential. How much for the new residential that we have clocked the point four million new residential sales we have clocked? So how much from uh, that new residential we have received? No, see the uh, new residential since it is only a point four million, so it will not be much. But uh, for uh, earlier on, uh, whatever we have done the sales in last quarters, it will, or you can say around twenty percent or so. So twenty percent. No, it will be around twenty crores or so. 20 crores okay thank you a uh, second question on the demand side uh, in the last quarter in the current quarter have you seen any change in the customer demand for residential and commercial how flexible we are towards that the change in demand from customer no no okay. can you just repeat it okay Yeah, uh, I will repeat my second question. A uh, second question is on the demand side, sir. In the last quarter, in the and the in current all quarters, uh, you have said in the opening remarks also that NRI customers' uh, demand side has doubled almost. So, have you seen any change in the type of demand that customers uh, take pre-COVID and the post-COVID? Yes. 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 Yes.
our uh, ceo mrs joshi uh, ceo of residential will ha- uh, respond to this good afternoon so one key uh, a couple of key changes that we have seen in demand for residential units is that the demand for the larger unit has certainly gone up as uh, jayashankar mentioned the unit size average unit size has gone up by about 15 Uh, second is the demand from the nri customers has definitely gone up and this is more towards the completed and nearing completion inventory uh, so those are the three key things one larger unit sizes nri customers and demand for the completed or near uh, completion uh, projects so the three key uh, trends which are different from uh, prior to uh, covid it used to be largely new launches new projects that used to see a lot of traction overall for us uh, for in q1 the demand for or the sales for the completed project uh, went to close to about 30% of our total sales which used to be in the 15 to 20% okay and is there any uh, other change for the commercial or the commercial is staying pre pre covid and post covid yeah mr subrata sharma will and good afternoon so in commercial uh, we are seeing a kind of requirement from uh, tenants who want to migrate or who want to consolidate uh, while reducing so they are wanting to move from the pricier market to the low cost market so that's what we are seeing but the uh, site visits are still very limited but there has been inquiries for managed office but uh, mid size segments have become more active now okay thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of biplab dev verma from antique stock please go ahead uh thank you uh, good afternoon sir uh, my question is on on your ebitda margin on the rental assets so i have been seeing the ebitda margin has increased for the rental assets significantly it was in 60 65% for the past few quarters now it has jumped to 74% in this quarter So just wondering what would be the reason for such sudden and a significant jump and um, which is good and whether such margin uh, uh, sustainable or not this is my first question yes. uh, so see the 74% increase is mainly because maintenance income has been very very low because there was a lockdown so all ebitda contribution is coming from the from the leasing segment so that is why that ebitda margin has increased but yes uh, future may as and as revenue increases we may achieve this ebitda margin but not quarter on quarter till uh, we reach the full revenue potential in uh, leasing segment okay 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 and uh, just another uh, uh, questions on your uh, the same um, i was i was little bit confused with the bangalore and chennai office project sir so just wanted to know about the uh, tech garden and the chennai voltage central office project uh how much uh, in each of these uh, assets lease till date and uh, like how much started generating rental uh, out of those lease date so i just wanted to know the leasing status what how much have been leased including hard option in both of these and how much of out of this how much have started generating rental and uh, uh, remaining uh, uh, lease area uh, would generate rental from when so this is my second question sir yeah so uh, as far as chennai market is concerned wtc chennai we have 2 million mm-hmm. out of that almost 1.67 million has been leased out so the availability is 0.34 million okay thank you mm-hmm. and as far as uh, brigade tech gardens in bangalore is concerned in the first mm-hmm. phase that is uh, b cluster we have mm-hmm. a, a availability of uh, 0.3 0.49 million out of which 0.3 million is hard option so it is only 1.19 million out of 1.24 million one sir sorry one point so basically uh, to make it easy for you it is total is 1.24 million in b cluster out of that 0.49 million that includes hard option that is 0.19 million is available for leasing new leases okay okay and in the and c cluster not... ah yes and in the c cluster yeah. we have 1.76 million out of which 1.55 million is available for leasing 
ओके ओके थैंक थैंक आई विल कम बैक इन दू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू The next question is from the line of Mohit Agrawal from IIFL. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, my first question is on the residential side. Now, you clarified that uh, this quarter you did not take any moratorium on the on the residential bit, and despite that, we saw that there was no increase in debt. So clearly, it was uh, net cash flow neutral. I wanted to understand firstly uh, you said that collections in june uh, if i if i hear correctly in the initial comments collections in june are now back to normal levels firstly is that correct and second part to that question is that how do you see the residential uh, business from a cash flow perspective uh, for the rest of the year do you see any uh, do you envisage any increase in uh, the debt for the remaining year Uh, so uh, see uh, in june we have achieved around 80% of the uh, resi collections uh, which were there i uh, guess uh, we have not taken much of the uh, moratorium in resi business and uh, we have been uh, as well as there are sweeps uh, in all the loans so we have been repaying all the loan also uh, very very uh, promptly that's why you can see some reduction in uh, loan in uh, uh, residential segment Uh, what was your third question uh sir how do you see the how do you see the residential segment from like do you see any anticipate any increase in the levels for the residential segment for the rest of the year considering collections are back to like near normal no see that uh, if you if you see uh, in the debt numbers it is mainly in the leasing which the uh, which the debt increase is happening uh, and resi there will be some debt increase but it will be very minor because collections will be there and may, uh, hospitality we don't intend to increase any debt right now so mainly the debt increase will be in uh, in uh, leasing segment for our capex project which is going on uh, uh, right now sure sir so my my next question is linked to that on the overall debt number so uh, so assuming resi won't see an increase in debt and uh, also uh, hospitality not significant uh, i see a total capex requirement in the uh, that you have shared for uh, for leasing and hospitality total requirement is about 1000 crores uh, you know for all the uh, for all the projects Uh, now assuming that you'll incur that in next 2 years is it fair to say that your uh, uh, capex for fy21 could be around 500 crores yeah uh, yeah you are right it may be to the tune of 500 crores but uh, there are new launches which are happening and we may be taking uh, uh, loans there and uh, if you see uh, once we launch the project in ready initial uh, initial construction uh, is through loan so there may be increase uh, somewhat in that uh, loan once the sales in on uh, online then uh, ready uh, then that loan uh, uh, gets uh, start uh, reducing down so there may be some increase in residential but mainly because of the new launches okay okay and sir my la- my last one uh, sir is on the numbers that i see on the wtc chennai uh, sir i remember last time you said that the the project is nearly 95% leased out uh, uh, we are comp- uh, you know i see is, is was there any uh, cancellation that you saw during the quarter because when i see the number right now it's a little lower than that so yeah the question is correct uh, so there has been back out back out by three tenants uh, uh mostly they were affected because of the covid scenario but having said that here we have like 0.3 million that is to be leased and since we have like the tenants which are market tenants we have like an internal requirement of approximately 0.2 million so we are pretty safe here okay okay sure sir thanks a lot and all the best thank you the next question is from the line of parakshit kanpal from hdfc securities please go ahead hi sir so my first question is you said that you have your back to the june was uh, pre sales was almost 65% in the residential segment so how if you can uh, give initial plan for this quarter in july august how how they looking in this quarter can you see how is the trend basically first on the residential side uh see overall uh, the market seems to be continuing the same trend as in june uh 
However, the uncertainty due to COVID and uh, income uncertainties and job losses continue in the market. So we are to be cautious at this uh, point in time. We expect the same trend to continue. Uh, if there is a substantial improvement in economy and other indicators, probably we will see here after. Okay. okay. So then coming to the, the different uh, businesses, hospitality, leasing. So now one side we see there's a retail uh, business and hospitality segment, which has been hit hard. So where it may require once the moratorium gets lifted by this month, and there could be some support which could be required from the parent company. And on the other side, we have two projects, BDG and the Chennai project. So both are getting leased. Uh, advanced stages of leasing. Chennai is almost leased out, but rental will start flowing in from Jan. But our capex debt will now, uh, the, the servicing will start. So if you can highlight, how will you match the cash flows on both the sides in the interim for the next six, seven months till, till the situation normalizes? Uh, in hospitality, yes, uh, uh, we have kept the vouchers uh, that if it required, uh, we'll, uh, we'll definitely pay all the interest, which is uh, required to be paid for hospitality and we'll be servicing all our uh, loans and of course you are right we have to give that support to hospitality uh, right now they are doing some operational loss of around uh, three crores per month so and this may uh, since now the lockdown is open and your occupancy is increasing it may reduce uh, uh, to a great extent so operationally we may not require to fund much in uh, hospitality but yes for interest uh, definitely, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to support them. But yes, uh, we are also waiting for the restructuring. If the restructuring comes, and I think hospitality and retail will be the segment where uh, uh, where the RBI or the uh, committee will also look into it. If there is restructuring, we'll definitely like to uh, like to go for the restructuring in hospitality and other retail business. Total retail and so hospitality, hospitality debt I have it's 500 odd crores, 540. So what is the retail debt? Retail it is around 600 crores. So total put together almost 1100 crores. So that means yeah, 1100 to 1200 crores. Yeah. So, so 100 100 odd crores of interest needs to be serviced and uh, this year and uh, uh, and also there could, could be some repayments coming. So what is the repayments on this 1100 crores of debt? This year? See, see repayment for during the year is around. 295 crores uh, which is there out of which uh, since we have not taken moratorium in uh, other loans also so we have already repaid around 44 45 crores uh, uh, of repayment has already been done but uh, having said that i would almost only like to say that repayment uh, cannot be told today because uh, i don't know how after moratorium banks are going to adjust their payment plan because uh, they are also working on it and if the restructuring how the restructuring works so it is a fluid situation but uh, what i am telling you the number is as per the loan schedules which were there uh, pre covid so, so the last so the funding requirement for these two businesses will be how much for this year uh, without restructuring say so what so, kind of budgeting you have done yeah so for both the uh, both the uh, the sbus we may require around 80 to 90 crores to support them which uh, we are already uh, prepared to do that and nothing is required for the office business, right? Because I think these two assets getting commissioned and in between if the servicing starts, so uh, there could be some pressure on you to also service till the time no, the so interest starts flowing. No, so there is no issue on servicing of interest there. And uh, leasing is happening. We have already taken LRD on the first phase of Tech Garden. And uh, we are also pushing equity into our uh, PREPL, uh, uh, PR, uh, WTC Chennai uh, venture. Okay, so I have a few more questions and join the queue. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Utkarsh Punkia from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, would it be fair to assume that our uh, uh, total uh, uh, debt repayment during the year will be around 1,000 crores this year? No, I said it is. Uh, it was 295 crores for the debt repayment, but now so after moratorium, there will be a, a change in the schedule, so it will be uh, much less. Okay. And out so, of the uh, 295 I, crores, uh, so I think this we have already paid 45 crores. 
we are generally refinancing this amount every quarter for the past three quarters. So how are we looking to do this for the rest of the year? Are we going to still keep refinancing it or are we looking at equity raising? Uh, yeah, I couldn't get you. We have not been refinancing our uh, debt. I, I couldn't get you the, your question. Uh, hello? Yeah, please go ahead. So, uh, would we be looking at any equity uh, financing this year? Uh, right now, there is no, we have just taken an enabling resolution, but there is no uh, plan right now. We are still uh, looking at it, and if there is any decision, we'll definitely uh, come back to the market. All right. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is a follow-up question from the line of Adhidev Chattopadhyay from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Again, just is again a follow-up question on a rental income for quarter. So, so this 50% waiver. So, I, what I understand, we have 110 crores of annual uh, rental income from the mall as of Q4. So, I'm guessing around 27 crores would be the quarterly earn rate. And uh, so for this quarter, we have lost around 13, 14 crores on the mall rental or more than that. I mean, how is the accounting work? Is it on accrual basis or on the terms you agreed with, with the tenant? You can see in our notes also, which auditors have put, we have been uh, very, very conservative in uh, accounting the revenue in retail and uh, wherever, uh, yes, we have given concession and what you see the drop down in revenue is only because of that. Uh, we what the process we have done is wherever uh, retailers have confirmed that uh, this is the rental uh, they are going to pay, we have only uh, taken to uh, taken that revenue uh, into our uh, into our Q1 uh, uh, numbers. Okay, and so the pending whatever you would have now reached in July and August, those will get reflected in second quarter. Is that understanding correct? Just wanted to understand. Yeah, yeah, that is correct. That is correct. Okay, that's why it's a little uh, lower than uh, what it would have been normally. That is, just wanted to yes. get upon that. So, I mean, uh, retail now is multi. So, how are the rental renegotiations progressing? Like, obviously, you know, multiplexes, food courts, and all that is the most affected segment. So, when you, when you say 50% waiver, this is only, it is excluding multiplexes and those areas, or it is for the overall area in your mall? No. Come again on your question, so what I said, understand, so, so let's assume 20% of my mall area is for multiplexes of the overall area. Multiplexes, food courts and gaming, whatever, entertainment zones. So I'm thinking the rental waiver of 50% is for the entire area or only for the 80% um, of the stores which can reopen. I just wanted to get some idea. In yes. multiplexes also have you reached an agreement? Yeah, so it is whatever rental concession we are given is for the retailers who have come back and opened the store. Of those retailers who are yet to be uh, approved for uh, operations by the local government, that is multiplex entertainment and some bit of uh, restaurants as in bar, uh, they, this, they, they, not, they don't include in this. Okay. So their uh, rentals are not being taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so and those uh, discussions are still will be done at a later date, right? Only once they are reopened, right? When yeah, yeah, so since there is an uncertainty and neither the retailers nor we are in in a, in a position to control it. Sure, sure, sure. So fine, so then that is clear. So on all the uh, residential business are coming now, do you have any revised target or guidance for the year in terms or the range you'd like to give in terms of what sort of sales you'd like to achieve? Uh, we normally don't give any guidance on the proper sales. Uh, the only thing I would say is that sales definitely has impacted as you have seen in the Q1. Uh, and as I had mentioned earlier, uh, we do expect the uncertainty to continue and uh, therefore we would be cautious uh, at this point in time. As and when the economy picks up, we expect that the demand will come back uh, a lot more aggressively than what was expected. Okay. Okay, fine, sir. That's it from my side and, and all the best. Yeah. But it may be water. Thank you. Next question is a follow-up question from the line of Yash Gupta from Angel Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the follow-up. My first question, what is the percentage of collection we've received for the residential?
uh, percentage in the sense i think uh, in our collection the maximum uh, uh, collection is there from the resi business only out of 376 crores 282 crores are come from the residential uh no uh, what i'm trying to get is that like suppose we have called for 350 or crore rupees from uh, for the residential sales and out of that customer has paid us 280 or crore rupees so is that correct understanding no see collections goes uh, it's a rolling uh, thing so we have uh, done a uh, more than uh, 4 million and even 1 million uh, last to last quarter so all those collections are coming in as and when construction are happening and we are demanding we have already told you that 20 crores were out of that for the new sales which has happened rest is all collection which has uh, which has been done for the demand raised yes it may be low because you know, there was a lockdown uh, people were not able to take loan but this will definitely sentiments will improve in the coming quarter okay and uh, my second question uh, do you think the nri demand will continue for the uh, for the rest of the year what you think on or sense on this that nri demand will going to be a uh, continuing process uh, we do think that the nri demand will continue because the two uh, locations which contribute significantly to the indian real estate market are the gcc and the us Uh, given the overall uncertainty in gcc which was there even pre covid covid only contributed to it we do expect that the demand from the nri customers will continue because i think a lot of them are looking for a place to stay when they uh, come back i think that's what is driving the demand right now okay thank you very much and all the best thank you The next question is from the line of Prem Kurana from Anand Rathi. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Thanks for taking my question. So most of my questions have already been answered. Just two with you, maybe. Uh, so one was essentially on. Uh, so somewhere in your remarks, when you said there is rising preference for larger units now. I mean, given the fact that there is this uh, rising demand, if you could ex- uh, please help us understand if it is as if. I mean, when you say there is rising demand, it is an absolute term. So let's say I mean pre-COVID, you were selling hundred a month. Now it's become hundred and ten. Or do you, when you say rising, it is uh, essentially in terms of proportion. So let's say I mean if you were selling two hundred and hundred were your larger units. Now it is the overall sales have come down to let's say hundred, and you're doing sixty of uh, larger units now. So is it proportion, or you've seen absolute number go up there? so uh, what we mentioned is that in absolute numbers the unit size that we were selling uh, prior to uh, the lockdown and this one there is a increase in about 15% in terms of the unit sizes which we also said is that during the lockdown there seems to be a demand for larger unit sizes across all our projects sure no why i asked this question is because essentially there could be a situation wherein let's say I mean, if there was a buyer who uh, was looking for a 2 bhk And given the fact that I mean, uh, let's say I mean, if he started his career uh, very very recently, his or her career very very recently, and they want to kind of buy their own property because these people would be more susceptible or would be I mean, not exactly sure of the how the things would pan out in terms of their career. There could be a situation wherein they would have uh, either deferred the plan for the time being or uh, are not planning to go ahead with the 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 decision now and. Uh, people who have in who have been in the service for let's say three, four, five years have savings. Given the fact that the market conditions are such that I mean these guys are in a position to kind of come and negotiate. These guys are there in the market to kind of negotiate and kind of buy larger units because they have savings as well. I mean they are at a position where I mean they are less uh, insecure in terms of losing their jobs. You are absolutely right in terms of the. segment of the buyers who are in the market now they are people with assured income stream and we are also seeing that the age profile in this quarter has slightly increased because those are the people who are with uh, income assurance much more than the younger ones who are just uh, entering the uh, income stream so your assessment is correct sure and also i mean we've recently done this launch jasper right el dorado Uh, what made us go ahead with this launch at this point in time when i mean uh, the situation still seems to be kind of fluid my answer would be taken as if i mean, would go ahead with all the launches irrespective of the market conditions the idea is to launch as and when the approvals are in place or uh, how has the response been for this jasper the new phase that we, that we launched at el dorado 
Well, uh, in this particular project, uh, this particular tower has slightly larger units. This is okay. largely an affordable housing project. Sure. So we had felt that there is a demand for slightly larger units in this location, which is why we went ahead with the launch of this uh, specific tower. To your uh, question on how has the launch gone, it has gone on our expected expectation post the COVID. Pre-COVID, it would have been a lot better. But post-COVID, looking at the current scenario, I think the launch has gone on expectation. Sure. And how about the new launches? I mean, as in, uh, these would be launched as and then you get the approvals, or you would try and understand the market better and then only come to the market. Yeah, it, it will depend on the market situation. This we've already launched, but mm-hmm. for upcoming launches, we will take it based on market situation. Sure, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Ranganathan from Doric Capital. Please go ahead. Hey, uh, thanks for uh, being on the call and for the opportunity. Uh, since there is so much uh, flux with respect to uh, the rental business in the sense that Benville actually climbs uh, begin paying rental and so forth, could you please update uh, what is your current thinking in terms of, say, um, what was the rental run rate fourth quarter from office and uh, retail? Uh, of last year, and then say fourth quarter of this year, that is the Jan March quarter. What do you expect it would be based on what you've currently uh, already leased, and then um, obviously uh, future leasing, uh, the rental only will start from uh, I guess next year. Would it be possible to share that information? You are asking about the percentage of rentals or the new leases. No, no, I'm asking the absolute number. So, for instance, let's say the um, run rate of rentals was X uh, in uh, fourth quarter last year. What do we expect it to be fourth quarter this year? After whatever we've leased already, they start occupying and they start paying us. I, exp- I, I assume they'll start paying us from January. But I don't know what your internal forecast is. Rajesh, we'll give you that number, I think, offline, and then we will take forward. But currently, your expectation is that whatever you lease, they will start paying from January? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, in WTCS, if you're asking that. And Tech Gardens as well. Tech Gardens, so it's already leased. There are some more uh, rental, there are some more leasing which has been done. And I think uh, uh, some uh, start will happen also in around October, November. So you're saying for Tech Gardens, they'll start paying all from October already? Yeah, for, for the new leases. Old leases are already paying. Already paying. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we are getting around 9 crores to 10 crores of lease rental income. And on the pipeline, I think we have roughly about uh, a million and a half square feet yet to lease total, uh, ballpark. Uh, what is the pipeline currently looking like? No, the overall, the inventory that we have will be approximately 2.5 million spread across all the projects. And the pipeline, as Pavitra said, that currently we have like positive pipeline of 0.6 million total. But having said that, uh, there are a number of inquiries from our existing tenants also, which we feel will mature over a period of because now the occupancy in the offices are hardly any. Okay, so that's the reason. Otherwise, uh, it, it, it would increase significantly once people start operating from offices. Okay. Uh, and for the retail, uh, when will you start charging 100% rental? Uh, 100% rental, I think it will take, uh, it will be a very evolved process by, I think it will all take about March this year. Okay. But it will sequentially increase based on some share of revenue and stuff like that. Hello? Yes, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, it seems we have lost line for the management. Request you to stay connected while we reconnect them. Thank you.
talking back. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the line for the management connected. Over to you, uh, Mr. Rangnathan, request you to please repeat your question. Yes, uh, so the rental will increase sequentially based on uh, the um, revenue share that you'll be getting from that, apart from the fixed rental. Uh, yes, certainly, certainly. Okay, thank you so much. I wish you best luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parikshit Kanpal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. So, thanks for the follow up, sir. So, my earlier question is continuing on that. So, you said there were some LRDs which were raised in the BTG project, right? Yes. So, how much will be the headroom uh, for the for further headroom for raising LRDs to understand how much of, uh, funding can come in from there? Because I think part of it also will get converted, CapEx loan will get converted to LRD. So, what would be the incremental beyond the CapEx uh, which we can raise from both the projects put together? So, uh, uh, both the project put together, we have a LRD uh, potential of around 2200 crores. Uh, so, uh, CAPEX now left in this, uh, both, the, both the projects are around 393 crores. Uh, uh, some, uh, yes, repayment will happen uh, around uh, uh, 575 crores in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, WTC Chennai and uh, around uh, uh, 500 uh, crores also in, uh, in uh, Tech Gardens. Will start flowing in right to 2200 crores. Something on the existing rental, how much can we pay? Which is already no, being tied up. Right? Yeah, so existing rental, we have already taken 400 crores uh, right now, LRD. Rest will depend upon the leasing. Uh, WTC Chennai is already leased, so once that uh, position starts happening, then maybe we can raise LRD somewhere in Q4. And what can be that amount? Because I think you told that January onwards the revenue will start coming in. From, so WTC as of now, you've not raised any LRD as of now? No, uh, because the rentals have not started, so we cannot okay. raise it. But yes, we are right. in the process of uh, uh, getting the loan sanction. So how much could be like from 4Q, or how much LRD potential can this have with the existing leases? It should be around uh, 1,000 to 1,100 crores. Wow. That can need a lot of shots for your cash. Yeah, and uh, I would also like to clarify that out of... Uh, uh, 400 crores we have already we have only utilized around 250 crores or so uh, rest is still there so last part of your shortfall in the hospitality and retail business can be met from raising from the fund flow from the lrd right yeah it can be met from lrd and we also have internal accruals both uh, both options are there uh, we look at the appropriate time as to how we have to fund hospitality Okay, so now given the weekend, the 2.5 million inventory across projects, which is to be leased and year again. So this does it include twin towers also, or is it separate? Because I I could match the number like 1.55 in the BTG and uh, 0.2 million. It's less than Chennai. So that's around 1.8. The balance is. No, it doesn't include twin towers. So balance will be uh, the existing projects, right? So which are already operational. Oh, existing projects. See, basically, uh, WTC yeah. Kochi, we have approximately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what was the sense of building these twin towers? Because I think in this time when people are looking at postponing CapEx and you started already building out the twin towers, so if you can just highlight uh, creating this uh, 1.51 million in Bangalore market. <laughs> see, the thing is the twin towers will be ready. The earliest it will be ready in, uh, by you can say end of uh, 2022 or so. And uh, we have to be future ready in our, uh, uh, you know, uh, business. And uh, we, uh, if you don't build in 20 now, we don't, uh, we will not have anything to leave in 2022. This is the entirely on our books. It is not, uh, in, uh, the, it is not that the market is dead. Uh, the m m market is uh, hurt currently, but I think it will recover. With all the you know medication, vaccine, bombs that we will get, the market will recover in the next nine months. Okay. 
So one point you did touch earlier uh, that high pricing markets, uh, the tendency will start to get consolidation towards low price markets. So, so but for our project, how are we positioning ourselves? So what will be the market positioning in terms of pricing for our projects? So basically, so we'll be like mark to market or so how much down our rentals would be relative to the high market, high under market. So you can give something on that. In this case, in this case, particularly, we are we have a huge opportunity in terms. Garden. It is in Whitefield, and Whitefield is kind of significantly lower price than Outer Ring Road, the major micro market of Bangalore. Okay, and Outer Ring Road also doesn't have huge vacancy, and plus the rentals over there have now reached anywhere between 85 to 95, whereas Whitefield is at around 55 to 60. Okay, so we would see a lot of companies which are actually strained during this COVID scenario. They are actually looking forward to and who are out of lock-in in those markets, okay, they are wanting to actually migrate to Whitefield because that will not actually also result in a significant displacement of their existing workplace because both, both micro-markets are very near. And we are actually seeing those kind of inquiries coming by uh, now that the lockdown is vacated, site visits have increased. But we see that uh, these numbers will increase significantly, such requirements. And so these inquiries you touched upon, so what could be the size or quantum of like these in average, uh, these individual inquiries, how big these could be? So, see, normally we are seeing, the as on date, we are seeing mostly the small size and mid size companies because they are more majorly hurt, okay, in this, this scenario. And those who are out of lock-in, they, they, they would be open to actually migrate to a low price market, okay, because one is they will be getting a new premises, okay, and maybe like many of those such transactions will be kind of, fitted out uh, premises so those 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 things will come into play okay this last things are on the nri field so of the things which we have done this quarter so what is the proportion of the nri field earlier uh, in this quarter the nri contribution was 25 for residential which and what has been our average usually like it used to be about 12 to 15. Last year was about 12, uh, was little over 12 percent, but usually it was about 15 percent in the previous years. Okay, sir. So. Okay, thank you, sir. That's all for my and on the list. Thank you. For a question, is from the line of Diplab De Burma from Antique Stock. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the uh, uh, opportunity again. Uh, just uh, wanted to understand in your residential collection and uh, in the last two three uh, months, including uh, this month, uh, including July, um, how is the collection in the sense those who have bought? Uh, what percentage of them are uh, uh, you know uh, paying? I, I mean, I mean, is there any any default significant that we should know? And um, if there is default, in which category? Uh, like 40, 50 lakh, 60, 70 lakh, or uh, no more than a crore? In which category defaults are happening? If it's happening. Okay. Uh, is there a stress on the customer side? Yes, there definitely there is stress. The uh, salary cuts and the job losses have increased the uh, stress on uh, uh, collections and therefore and essentially the customer's ability to pay. Currently, we aren't seeing huge amount of uh, defaults. Yes, there, there are uh, delays because customers, one of the uh, significant things which has happened in Bangalore is because it is the tech capital a lot of people who are from outside the state have moved back to their uh, location. So that is actually putting a lot of pressure in loan processing, releasing payments, etc. So currently we do not see any, any uh, huge uh, stress in terms of cancellation. Are there cancellations? Definitely, yes. But we don't see a huge stress. Either. But there are delays. There are definitely delays. There are different delays. A lot of them, as I mentioned, are logistical delays. Uh, which we hope uh, we should be able to overcome. So there is no cause for concern in terms of cancellation per se right now, as of now. We don't, right. we don't see it in the immediate future. Okay. okay. Uh, sir, uh, you have launched uh, two projects, that's what uh, I heard, um, residential projects, two or one, I, I anyway. So just wanting to understand this launch project, when you launch this uh, the project, um, but typically, uh, uh, in a ballpark number, I just want you to understand that when you launch a project earlier, pre-COVID, what percentage of a project gets sold in the first three months vis-a-vis -vis now in this uh, uh, launch project in Q1? 
what percentage uh, got sold i just want that comparison is there any impact on uh, because of covid on the uh, sales of a, a new launch project that's what uh, i just wanted to know so typically free covid in the particularly in the last uh, 12 to 18 months before lockdown we used to see in the first 3 uh, uh, to 4 months about uh, 15 16% getting sold that definitely has reduced uh, in the one project that we have launched in this quarter uh, because of the covid impact uh, so we believe that it will improve uh, but definitely uh, compared to the pre covid scenario it will probably take a little longer for us to reach that uh, 15 20% uh, mark they deter you i mean obviously not it's a very fluid uh, uh, environment but that uh, uh, based on obviously based on just one project we can't draw that conclusion but nevertheless it will deter you uh, in launching new projects in the current scenario right sir? uh we will as we had said earlier we will look at market conditions and the markets that we are launching uh, the new uh, projects uh, so yes we are we will be careful uh, in launching we will assess the demand the estimated demand and then we will go ahead with uh, uh, launches currently we are planning but we will definitely watch the market oh. oh, one final question sir uh, uh, just uh, in that brigade tech garden uh, uh the rental that you are getting i heard is uh, uh saying 8 or 9 crore rental that rental is out of how how much uh, lease area 8.9 crore you said that you have that is 0.75 million so basically 0.75 million of bangalore tech garden already started generating rental income of 8.9 crore per quarter right right okay. thank you thank you sir that's all more on my side thank you all the best sir thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i now hand the conference over to ms pavitra shankar executive director for closing comments thank you and over to you thank you very much despite a tough q1 our organization has had many bright moments that we celebrated We are happy to say that Brigade was ranked number 43 in India's top 100 best companies to work for in 2020 by the Great Place to Work Institute and the Economic Times in one of the largest workplace studies conducted in India. The recognition this year was made even more special as it marked the 10th year in a row that we have received this award. Our subsidiary Brigade Hospitality Services Limited ranked third among India's great mid-sized workplaces in 2020 also by the great places to work uh, institute and the economic times we initiated a number of relief measures for covid-19 in q1 which we have continued in q2 among these we count donations of ambulances ventilators and prefab icu modules to various hospitals dry rations and meals to the needy construction workers support and engagement through meals and allowances and support to the chief minister's relief fund another proud moment was the inauguration of the st john's health center in june at brigade meadows a 60 acre integrated enclave on kanampura road bangalore this not for profit initiative is a joint effort of the brigade foundation and the highly and the highly reputed st john's medical college and hospital the health center commends services on june 25th and caters to all the primary health care needs of families not just in brigade meadows but in the entire neighborhood and will eventually become a full fledged hospital let us not ignore the importance of arts and culture when needed the most during our darkest times the indian music experience museum supported and founded by brigade has had a challenging time due to the pandemic but has adapted to the changing times with a new partnership with google arts and culture To commemorate Independence Day, over 100 artifacts from the IME, India's first interactive music museum, can now be viewed and experienced by people all around the world in a specially curated digital exhibit titled Legends of Indian Music and Memorabilia. The lockdown and all its challenges have made all of us at Brigade introspect and reevaluate many things, but we remain committed to our core values, QC first, which stands for quality and customer fairness 
innovation, responsible socially, and trust. They continue to be our, our guiding principles whether times are good or challenging. We know that better days will come, and we plan to be ready for them stronger and more resilient. Thank you all for taking the time to hear from us today. Stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Brigade Enterprises Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and even now, just connect your lines.